In today's video, I'll be showing you how to root any Android device without needing the boot image file. I have broken this tutorial into three parts. First, unlocking the bootloader, finding the kernel version, and finally rooting your device. In this example, I'll be using a Google Pixel 6a. But after watching this video, you can root any device without having boot image file. On my device running Android 14 stable, but the steps are similar across most Android devices. First, you'll need to enable developer options on your phone. To do this, go to your settings. Find the build number and tap it several times until you unlock developer mode. Once done, you can access developer options in the system settings. Now, inside developer options, enable OEM unlocking if it's not already enabled. Mine is already enabled. And also toggle on USB debugging. Once both options are enabled, connect your phone to your computer using a USB cable. Please watch this video carefully until the end. Missing any step during the process may result in your phone being bricked. On your computer, you'll need to download a few tools. Android Stm Manager and drivers for ADB and Fastboot. These tools are available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so choose accordingly. I've also included all the download links in the video description. After downloading the tools, extract the platform tools and then install the USB drivers. I've already installed the drivers, so you might see a prompt to repair them. Once the drivers are installed, navigate to the Platform Tools folder, click on the address bar and type SOMP to open Command Prompt directly in that folder. In Command Prompt, type a DB devices and wait. This will prompt you to allow USB debugging on your phone, so allow USB debugging. And then run ADB devices again to confirm your device is connected. Next, type ADB Reboot Bootloader to boot your phone into fast boot mode. Once in fast boot mode, if you're using a Pixel device like me, you'll see the bootloader status is locked. If your phone doesn't show the bootloader status, don't worry, it's normal. Most of the phones doesn't display bootloader status in fast boot. You can also check bootloader status using these commands. Our main task here is to unlock the bootloader. To do this, type fastboot flashing unlock. Your phone will then ask for confirmation. Do you want to unlock bootloader? Use volume buttons to unlock the bootloader as I am doing. Once your bootloader unlocked, reboot your phone. While rebooting your phone, you might see some warning. These warnings are totally normal, ignore them. Since unlocking the bootloader wipes your device, you'll need to set it up again. Once your device is set up, enable USB debugging again. Now the critical part of this video is finding the matching kernel module interface KMI version for your device. First, hit over to Google and search for the Kernel SU project. Here you will find complete installation guide, but you don't need to read the whole documentation, leave it to me. Click on GitHub releases link from this page. And from GitHub page under version 1.0.1, .1, click on show 100 assets. Scroll to bottom and download Kernel SU Android app. Once downloaded, you can install it using a DB by typing a DB install and dragging the app file into the terminal. After installing the kernel SU app, open it. If your device is supported, you'll see a status that says not installed. If it says unsupported, don't worry, you can still root your phone using the boot image method, which I'll cover in a future video, so make sure to subscribe for that. Now you need to check your device's kernel version note kernel Android version might be different from actual Android OS running on your phone. Just like my phone is running on Android 14, but my kernel version is Android 13. For example, if your kernel version is this, then the KMI version is this. White downloading KMI file for your device. But the important thing is to match the first two numbers of your kernel version and same Android version. So open GitHub release page again and find matching image for your device. Choose correct image from here, otherwise you'll brick your phone. Now, my kernel version is 5.10.198. But I'm downloading kernel image ending with version 205 cause it has a higher security patch version. 
Newer Android devices may have anti-rollback mechanisms in place that do not allow flashing a boot image with an old security patch level. Now you're seeing three images with same version, but if you look closely, they are using different compression method. Follow this provided list to choose correct kernel or Google your manufacturer. Once you've found the correct kernel image for your phone, download it after downloading this file. Our next step is to reboot device in fastboot mode. So open terminal again and type a DB reboot loader. Once you're in fastboot mode, type fastboot devices for check your device is connected. Now let me quickly adjust my window for better view to flash this kernel image. Type fastboot flash boot then drag your boot image in terminal. But first you're to extract boot image from downloaded archive. Once flashed, reboot your device. If prompted to wipe user data, go ahead and format your device. Bonus tip. Before fully flashing the image, you can boot into it first to ensure compatibility by typing fastboot boot followed by the kernel image. If the phone boots successfully, then continue with the rooting process in this video. Once your device is booted, set it up again, enable USB debugging, and reinstall the kernel SU app using ADB. After opening kernel SU, the status should now show as working. In the kernel SU app, pay pop on the working status card, then select direct install and follow the prompts to patch your boot image. Once the patching is done, reboot your device. To confirm your device is rooted, download the root checker app. Keep in mind with kernel SU, you'll need to manually grant SuperRooster permissions from within the kernel SU app. But after rooting your phone with kernel SU, you can also install Magisk to avoid manually granting super user permission. Let's check root status in root checker app. And there you have it. Your device is now successfully rooted without needing the boot image file. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials. I'll also be releasing a video on rooting with boot IMG soon, so stay tuned for that.